All right, this is the last section for, for Unit 6. Um, urbanization is the title, the growth of the, the cities, and for the United States, we had a huge boom in the late 1800s, early 1900s of cities. It actually is a accumulation of a lot of the other sections that we had, the steel industry, the farming, the railroads all coming together, electricity with these inventions. So some of the things are repeats from other parts or how they, are, how they come together. There are a lot of standards. One of the main ones that we will be focusing on here is where the change that we shifted from agrarian to industrial society, but again, it's intertwines uh, with a lot of these. The time period is there is no one set time, although there are certain things that occurred in this, but this is where the changes that occurred, mainly you'd say in the 1880s through, through the World War I. All right, the shift that we would have in here, and I go back to where we had for immigration, what's the number one reason people move? It's economics. So we're gonna have push-pull factors here, but for statistics, by 1900, we will have 40% of Americans living in cities, and then by the 1920 census, it'll be the first that we have over half the people living in urban areas. Why? Some people were pushed out of their countries because they, um, and the immigrants that were poor, our farm technology made it where we needed less farmers. I give the example of, let's say we have a farmer in the middle of Nebraska. He has six children, three daughters, three sons. One of his sons may go on to be a farmer, but what are the other two going to? One of them may move to the city. And also with the daughters, where, where are they going to go? Um, there, Some of them will stay in, the, in that town, in that area, but others will move to the city. So I'll come back later to some of these farm girls that are moving to the cities. Pull factors. The allure of the city, even today we have this, but the number one thing is jobs. There's a lot of jobs that we have in here. The Great Migration is something that was in our notes earlier, but during this time period we will also have it where a lot of our African Americans are going to move from the south and they're going to move to northern cities. This occurs um, in the biggest time during World War I, but we'll have this big demographic shift um, during, that, that, during that time period. Here's for, for our question, the biggest lures was, again, jobs that we have. All right, this part, we watched a couple different sections from America, America's Story of Us um, here, and kind of a, a, where there's not as much in, straight out in this notes, but a lot of the big ideas that we have. The, the cities go up with skyscrapers, um, and they, we're going to have, for the still frames, we're gonna have the Elder Safety Elevators there. The cities are going to be connected together. New York City, the boroughs come together with bridges. We're going to have subways. We're going to have street streetcars. We're going to have the elevated railroads in places like Chicago and Cleveland um, there. So all these transportation um, improvements that we have. But there's going to be major problems. Show, or show a part about um, Colonel Weary and where he sets up things to clean up and the pollution that we have. And then we're gonna to have to make sewers and water and clean water that we're going to have in these cities, the sanitation problems. There's gonna be fire problems. We'll, we'll see a part about the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory on there. We're gonna to, going to have crime problems, which I also show a part in there about where we have our first mug shops and where, where people in those cities, they could, they could basically move from place to place even for within a city because um, they could get away, away with things. And so mug shots will be one of the things that, that comes with the rogues gallery that we have. Um, the Chicago and Boston fires and how it was reacted a little bit different. Chicago will rebuild a modern city. They will structure it. If you see the city of Chicago, it's almost like a giant fan as every, everything comes in. Boston built a, rebuilt a lot of their city on the old streets in there. So transportation is even harder in the middle of Boston than it is in other areas. Not only in other areas, but this is where for Florida, we have a streetcar here in Jacksonville. If you go to Tampa today, we have an uh, electric trolley that goes from Ebor City down Channel Side through the, some of the downtown area that you can take here. I use this question as an example of one that can be used um, on the EOC. Please notice there's are several different things they try to trick you on this one. The first would be municipalities. Okay, that's vocabulary, meaning cities. That is open game because that's a socialized vocabulary. The other thing, the last quarter of the 19th century, um, I tell you on a paper to actually physically write out and write in there 1900s um, there. I mean, sorry, 1800s, not 1900s in there. In there, the 19th century is the 1800s, so it's 1875 to to 1900 on there. There's a big difference because A and D would actually be correct if you're thinking 1975 to 2000. 
uh, there. But this is where the correct answer for this is a question. It's an easy question that's written in a very hard way. All right, the next couple slides are actually where there's, with all the things in the lure of the city that, that we have um, here. So we have dance halls and clubs, um, the ethnic clubs that, that are gone, where in far and away you're going to see the, that the, the Irish go to their club. We still have in Citrus County, we have an, um, an Irish American club, an Italian American club there. We have concerts halls like Rockefeller um, Center and Carnegie Hall and cities were building those. For vaudeville, they were entertainment that, that we have, um, kind of what we have today in many ways, where they're sometimes like little skits, sometimes comedy, maybe some music with it that we have. For fraternal organizations, not fraternities like a, in a college, but the Elks Club, Moose Clubs, and they're saying that men will, will join. A lot of pubs and bars, and we'll come back to that idea when we come back in the Progressive Era and where the 18th Amendment's debated uh, there. Amusement parks were started this time. Coney Island outside of New York City. Um, talking about some things with roller coasters, and if you like roller coasters, the old-fashioned ones with the wood on it have. Shopping becomes not a necessity, but actually becomes a leisure activity among the middle, the upper middle, and rich. And we'll have department stores like Gimbel's in Philadelphia, Macy's in New York, Marshall Fields in Chicago for women, and um, later on kind of get into the proper and the other women um, that you have. But for women, they would go shopping, go to a tea room, because a proper woman's not gonna go to those pubs or those bars um, there, but they would go to the tea rooms that you have. For entertainment, again, we have vaudeville for the theater. We have these movie palaces, our movie theaters. Now they're silent movies um, at this time period, but, but this is where there would be something that is major that, that you have in here. I never figure out exactly how to describe ragtime. I usually ask some people in class that are with, that know things with music, and they even have a hard time. It's not jazz, but it's but it's it's a segue to jazz. The best way I can explain is when you go to Disney World and you walk in the Main Street. It's supposed to be that Victorian time period, and you have the barbershop quartet and the music that's playing at that that time um, there. But that's the bigger music that we have. For sports, we're going to have baseball and basketball that are becoming bigger, and we're having some sort of semi-pro teams that are, are coming about, like with baseball um, there. Biking, now that we are having paved streets, they can, they can bike. Tennis and golf with, with, with the upper middle class and the richer that, that are using that. Um, the richer people are, going, are the ones that are in school. Universities aren't what you normally think of today. Um, and it's pretty much the, the rich, but you're going to have the NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletic Association, that starts. Cruise, swimming, and track will be some of the biggest sports. Football at that time is not what you think of um, as football today. There's no forward pass. There's a lot more people on the field. Um, actually, and Teddy Roosevelt will actually work on things, so they make some rules changes because so many people were dying in college football that they changed the rules um, there because they were going to ban college football. All right, I kind of have some of the pictures skipped in here. This is things where later on we're about advertising um, there, but some of the changes, and I know I referred back to this before, were Coca-Cola. I mean, it started out, it was supposed to be something that was more of a medicine, you see, for headaches, a mental phys physical exhaustion. Originally had cocaine in it. Later on, that was replaced with, with caffeine. Um, we're going to have different elixirs and things like that that are made, but but a lot of this will have to be regulated, and then when we get to the to the progressive era in our next unit, this is where we're going to the, the Pure Food and Drug Act. That's going to in Florida here, where we have we're going to have more vacations, and so you see some of the things. This is in West Palm Beach. Notice how skimpy the bathing suits are for for the women. Um, we'll also come back and kind of show what the difference. Where in the 1920s we we have a huge difference um, there. Um, things. I right, for the print entertainment, they had find, found a way to make paper a lot cheaper uh, in the late 1800s. So we're going to have the penny press, which is when newspapers sold for a, a penny a piece. We're going to have dime novels, which are going to be the, um, a dime to buy by the books. I know we've had that term before. Um, there. But with all of this mass things and a lot more people learning how to read and write, we're going to have a marketing for it. Now, yellow journalism will be the sensationalization of news. Um, Hearst and Pulitzer are going to be rival publishers. They're going to have the different newspapers there. And what they're going to try to do is sell more newspapers. It may not be as much with true news, but the sensationalizing of it are there. We're going to see how later on when we get to imperialism that this yellow journalism will be one of the causes for the Spanish-American War. Um, 
in journalism. This is where you think of um, on an internet news in there and you want to get clicks, but you want people to buy newspapers in those times. So it's an old saying, what's going to sell more newspapers? A headline that says dog bites man or a headline that says man bites dog. We also have for the, the magazines, we're going to have the beginning of the muckrakers. We saw um, part for, for Reese and where uh, how the other half lives. We're going to have a part for muckrakers a little bit later in this unit, but a lot of them in the, the next unit for the progressive unit. The two biggest magazines for women um, at that time, it was Ladies Home Journal and uh, Harper's Weekly was still the largest for men in the late, late 1800s and now kind of changed in the early 1900s. Um, Ed, Edward Bach, um, here in Florida, we have Bach Towers outside of Lake Wells. When he retired, he made the gardens there. And Thomas Nash, you should recognize his name for, for where we had the political cartoons um, that took down Boss Tweed. Again, our dime novels, the main style of of literature that we have for American literature then is realism, Horatio um, Alger with his rags to riches stories, Mark Twain, Stephen Crane. Um, again, it's realism that they write a story that you can picture yourself, not fantasy that you have. We'll also have this time Dean Howe. William Dean Howe will be writing and he'll be writing about a theme that kind of comes and goes in times in American history. Earlier with the transcendentalism, later with the lost generation and the beat writers um, there, but saying about how Americans we're too shallow. They're more worried about um, the monetary and consumer consumer issues in here. Now, this last one, Sister Carrie. This is not a muckraker, but it's kind of a story. And where I had mentioned earlier about it, what about these farm girls? So, innocent farm girl from the middle of Nebraska moves to Chicago. Not going to be an easy life. Um, crime was a lot easier. You could get away with a lot more things. the The girl is only going to get paid about half of what a male is getting paid. Um, there, so it was. It was not always a good situation, and this is where where Dreiser will will um, show this. All right, the consumer changes at this time. All of these things, except for the last part, are things we kind of had before. We're going to have people that are going to buy more store bought clothing because of a Singer sewing machine that we had. The factories, and it's become a lot cheaper. The transportation with the railroads. Because of the, of, of the still, we're going to have more canned goods than the meatpacking industry and still effects that we have. Shopping becoming a fun activity on there where women are going to go to department stores and they're going to go to tea rooms there. If you lived in the country, you could order things from Sears and Montgomery Ward. But one thing that's kind of added here is we're going to start then the mass marketing and we're going to have advertising um, here. That's why you saw early with the Coca-Cola. Um, and you see a lot of these different products and name brands um, that, that you have in here. All right, these pictures, some of these are from um, Ugali. It's a small town outside of, of Melbourne. Lots of times we don't have pictures of just ordinary life. I mean, think about it. If you're a photographer, do you go take pictures in the middle of a grocery store? But here's where we have a store. There's a picture on the right. You can kind of see the small store. You actually, there's a little barber shop um, next to it. You can see, sort of see the pole in there, the striped pole. On there, but the, the other side, the one on the left, you see these stacks of cans and bottles and things that are under the glass cases, and you see the baskets for for fruit. Um, and you'll see a lot of the pictures of different stores that are are like this, and you see some of the advertising, like there's one for the soap on there. But the products that they have here in Inverness, we would have if you go to Stump Knockers Restaurant, that was one for decades was a store. There's a little plaque inside of it that tells of this. Um, here's one that's more of a like a butcher shop also that you have and you have vegetables there. Um, you see an advertisement for Lim Limpton's tea um, here. There on the left hand side that's actually a washing machine that you have. So yeah, you have to turn the tumbler yourself um, here. But again, a lot of the stores that we have in cities are going to have more of their department stores. But you're going to have these, these things in the store. And again, if you lived out in the country, you could order these things in Sears catalog. All right, late 1800s for the education, some of the things we had before coming together. Um, the push to have immigrants educated, so kindergarten, there's going to be a push by the unions to, to have it where school is mandatory for a longer period. So by the time we get to the early 1900s, we're going to have more people that are, are in school till they're until 12 or 13 years old. Um, Again, part of that was the assimilation of the immigrants and also the assimilization of, of the Native Americans with the Dawes Act. We're going to have a big expansion of college and technical schools. Part of this will be the population growing. Part of this will be that we have more upper class that is growing in there. Part of it will be the other factors. We have the gospel of wealth. 
when Carnegie wrote for the rich to give back, well, a lot of them that were robber barons at that time will start schools. Vanderbilt will start the school in Nashville, Stanford in California, here in Florida, Stetson, the robber baron for making hats, um, will start the university. That's why their mascot is the Hatters. The Morrell land grants that we had in the agriculture side will have universities that, that are both growing or, or new universities that come about from that here in Florida where we have the consolidation and University of Florida comes about for us. One thing that I haven't really mentioned in, in, along the way here is we're going to have a growth of women's colleges. Um, we're going to have these sister schools to the Ivy League schools. Mount Holyoke was probably the most famous of that. And a lot of your upper middle and your, and your richer um, um, citizens were going to go to these universities. We're also going to have the beginning of some of your teachers' colleges that are starting in some, in some places. For Florida, we're going to have a change in 1905, what is called the Buckman Act. There were seven different colleges that were, that were under the uh, Florida, basically the state of Florida ran. Now, this was done more for economic reasons. They consolidate the seven white institutions into the University of Florida in Gainesville and then the Florida State College for Women in Tallahassee. They will also then establish at that time, um, then for, for African Americans, Florida A&M. We will have then the Florida Deaf, School for the Deaf and the Blind um, here. And this is where for, for basically nearly 40 years or 42 years, we will have this separation. After World War II, then Florida State College for Women will become co-ed to become Florida State University, and University of Florida will also become co-ed um, in, in the same year in 1947 um, after the war. Probably not what you're thinking when you think of Miami, but again, Miami was a very small trading community on there. It will not be till the railroad gets there soon after that, that it will start to grow and it won't really boom until after 1910. Um, there, but that's where you kind of think Coconut Grove, and here's a school with it. Here's where you kind of think, and we could probably have this is the way a lot maybe a school would look here in Citrus County. Notice a lot of the smaller kids are barefooted. Um, if it wasn't winter time, um, this is where you would have st students that that wouldn't ha have shoes. I mean, your feet are growing, and if you weren't a rich enough family, you didn't wear shoes year year round. Um, in there. For Stetson University, this, this tells the story of this where it starts where John Stetson gave some money and it was actually we're going to have in there DeLand will we'll end up he's starting the, the town of DeLand. Um, great story with, with um, DeLand where he was selling all kinds of land to people but he, but he actually fulfilled his promise when he told them that if they were to lose their money and um, thinks he would refund it to them. In 1895 we'll have a huge freeze which will freeze out and kill their orange groves and um, Henry DeLand will actually go bankrupt where he does refund the money for all the people that, that are, are there, but lives up to his word. But that's where in DeLand, Florida, we have Stetson University. Okay, the term the Victorian age. Now this is the British term because in British society, but we go by this. It's one of two time periods that we really look back at American history with a lot of nostalgia. The other would be the 1950s. And say class that probably in the future, a decade or two from now, we'll probably look back at like the 80s and the 90s in this way, um, which are the, kind of the good old days on there. We kind of forget some of the negative things on there and focus on it. But the Victorian age, and this is the time that for the middle and upper class, where we're going to have the proper uh, side in here. A lot of them are going to work for laws for temperance and moral laws, which in the progressive era will focus on some of the laws that they are passed. Here's where the, the, the differences between the proper and the common, and I, and I show on the movie Far and Away, again, where are the different groups. You see for a, for a woman, a proper woman, you notice that, like for her dress, I mean, in Far Away, that, it, that the character John, that um, gets onto the, uh, to the female because her skirt's up a little bit, she's showing a little bit of ankle skin on there. Meanwhile, then after that, they go into one of those ethnic clubs, and you have, have women, which, um, are showing a lot more than just a little ankle skin um, there. And they definitely don't have where you see, see it buttoned up all the way to their neck and this is when we have brooches for things. We will have the growth of the middle class during this time period. And a lot of things that you think of for middle class today um, would be more what you think of for the upper middle class um, that, that you have. 
But this is where vacations are going to be more common. Now, the vacation at that time was not like a week vacation, but you may have for a month or two you go into place. This is where we're going to have for Florida the Flagler hotels, the plant hotels that are all connected by their railroads here. We're going to have your Pullman sleepers and the trains taking on there. Um, the effect on, that I say effect for, for women. Um, here's where there's both positive and negative because we're going to have for, for women that they're going to go more to college, but many times they were expected to then still be going home and taking care of the children in the house. I don't have. We're famous a lot of times for Victorian architecture. The top two pictures are here in Citrus County. I believe that's the McLeod House. There is our, our historic courthouse that were built. But some of the, 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 the architecture style and what's very popular for a lot of towns is Victorian style architecture. The biggest holiday of all that time was the 4th of July. It's not Christmas or Thanksgiving at that. And this is where, rich or poor, they celebrated. If you lived in the country, you celebrated. If you lived in the city, you celebrated 4th of July. This is where the idea for immigrants, because the immigrants are Americans on there. And can you imagine how big the celebration was in 1876, the 100 year birthday of America? Uh, there. I was too little to know in 1976 for the bicentennial. Pretty soon, in 2026, we will have the 250th. So you think that's going to be bigger than a normal 4th of July. But again, in the past, the biggest holiday in America was the 4th of July. Everybody celebrated um, 4th of July. It didn't matter what, how rich, poor, ethnic group um, that you're in or religion that you're in. Here's, a, here's an Orlando. Um, there, where you see they have a parade in the 1880s, a parade in Fort Meade in, in Florida. By this time, you notice it's 1914, notice these cars, you notice a whole lot of Model T cars um, at, at that time. All right, in the cities, we're going to have these different communities. We had the reading about the Scandinavians and the, the um, Italians. A lot of groups will, will come and they will, will then settle in their neighborhoods. This map on the right, you see for darker areas where it's German, Irish, Bohemian, Swedish, Polish, so different neighborhoods. Um, I'm not sure that might be Chicago or Milwaukee um, there for, for, for what that map is showing there. But you would have this and you think of like Little Italy and in New York City. And so we, we're going to have people that are going to move to neighborhoods. We still have that down in Miami um, and where you go and there's neighborhoods where, where it is more Dominican or more Cuban on the chat. One thing that was common, and this is where and uh, um, the, the, how, um, the story of America, they talk about with the tenements. These are the poor areas that, that you have in here, and you have a lot of people living in here. One style of apartments were these dumbbell apartments, where you may have a one, even a one-room apartment that you have um, here. A lot of the changes that were made at this time were for sanitation, that, um, that again, trying to force where there was indoor bathrooms um, at that time um, there. Here's where Jacob Rees, and then the story of us, there's a little part about for him. And this is where for the muckrakers, he is going to have for photojournalism, he's going to go and take pictures of things and show there. And he has this slideshow that he'll go and take for the rich in, in New York. And they just avoided those neighborhoods. They didn't see it up I mean, there. But he has and how the other half lives. So he's showing them. Um, there and how the poor are. We're going to have, that's going to be part of it, but we're going to have what's called the social gospel movement. Now, here's where you need to think. When you see gospel, you think churches. So we have a lot of things for the churches um, that are involved. And the main people that are going to be involved in this are going to be um, middle class Protestant women on um, there. So yes, we'll have other groups, but that will be the predominant group. A lot of them went to to college or they had higher schooling but they weren't supposed to if they were rich enough to work again that would kind of be a shame on their husband and he's not making enough um in here and they're going to work then and start a lot of the social and economic injustices some of the women yes their their whole goal they wanted to go shopping and go to tea rooms but others wanted to do more um that they would have the salvation army starts at this time they're part of that which is a a a, a christian group um there their mission was to help the homeless and hungry, the same as it is, is today. What will end up happening is we're going to have a lot of these settlement houses that are started. And this is where these women, these middle class women, um, are going to go and they're going to try to change things that they see are wrong. They're going to help the poor. If they see that women that maybe have been abused 
um, there. So they're going to try to help immigrants to learn English and teach, teach reading and writing on um, there. They're going to help people that have alcohol abuse problems on um, there. They're going to try to fight crime in, in the, these areas um, here. The most famous of these settlements houses was in Chicago. It was the whole house. Jane Addams, who will later on win a Nobel Peace Prize, she will be one that, that starts, starts this. Person who starts it is Jane Adams in here. Here's where you see for this question, the social gospel sought to apply the principles and teaching of Jesus to the problems of urban residents. Again, the religious side, um, and the, that, they're, that you're supposed to be Christ-like, and Christ helped out the poor people. Another movement at this time will be the City Beautiful movement. As all these people are moving to the city, a lot of the poor people never got to see see sun outside. And so we are going to have it where we're going to have parks that are done. Um, this is where uh, that we will have a push that's made in New York City that every school has some sort of playground. One of the most famous places people will be Fre Frederick Law Olmsted. He'll be designer of a lot of parks throughout America, the most famous of which is Central Park. And he is an example of a landscape architecture, architect that you have. Um, designs in the middle of millions of people. There are areas in Central Park that you can go to that you just don't even hear the city around you. Um, literally move things around with, with, with hills and planting trees that, not for what they look like at that time, but what they're going to be like decades later on their have. We'd also have other aspects like for the Gospel of Wealth, and this is where like Carnegie Hall and Rockefeller Center and libraries that, that, they are, that the rich are contributing and trying to to improve their city culturally. Touching upon a little things for the women's movements, we're gonna have more in the progressive movement, but this is where there's gonna be more education opportunities. Talked about the sister schools in here. A lot of women are going to get degrees in the social science fields like sociology, economics um, there. They're gonna be involved in these movements um, that we're gonna have. Some of the major movements that we'll be looking at in the next unit, the temperance movement. Um, there we have the biggest group will be the Women's Christian Temperance Union. When you see temperance, you need to be thinking they're against alcohol. It will actually have started before the Civil War, gained momentum in the late 1800s, till we get to the point that we will have the 18th Amendment that will outlaw alcohol. Um, there, suffrage. We're going to have Susan B. Anthony um, will be arrested a couple times for trying to vote, and probably the most famous of the suffragettes that we will have. She will pass away before the 19th Amendment is passed, but this is where this movement in the late 1800s, and then we're going to say it more in the progressive movement. The Settlement House with Jane Addams, um, where we just talked about that, and earlier with the unions, uh, Mary Jones, or known as uh, Mother Jones, where she was trying to go and do things to try to stop child labor. Again, part of that was to try to make sure it wasn't competition, but there were other aspects um, that, are, that are shown with this. For our muckrakers, I'm touching upon some of these. We will have more later on. Henry George will have it when the phrase, and you probably have heard this, the haves and the have-nots, basically the rich and the poor. But he was blaming the social problems that we have um, there. Are, he's going to blame them on the wealthy. Jacob Reese, we already mentioned on how the other half lives. Um, both of these will have socialist tendencies. There and this is where we're going to see politically where the communist and the socialist party is going to gain some steam in here. Again, haves and have nots. You kind of think of um, with Marx and Marxism and the idea of the proletariat and the bourgeois. Some of the same ideas that we have there. Edward Bellamy will will write a, like a dystopian novel um, in there about looking backwards and what he will end up saying is that the government needs to own the industries and certain industries. Some of this will be the same thing that the populists are saying at that time. Um, there were the populists were saying that they need, that the government needed to own the railroads to help out the farmers. But he'll go even further than that. And here's where it's a lot of the ideas that we would think with socialism today. Most of this will be covered, covered in more in depth when we go to the progressive unit in Unit 7.